So what is snort, right? Because I've thrown around the term or the word snort quite a bit. Uh, snort is a popular free and open source IDS IPS system. So intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system that is used to perform traffic or protocol analysis, content matching, and can be used to detect and prevent various attacks based on predefined rules. Snort has been in active development and has thousands of users and contributors that develop rules or rule sets to keep Snort up to date with the latest attacks or the latest intrusions. So uh, the way I want you to think of a rule, because uh, I've mentioned rules quite a bit here, is uh, you know if you if you take a look at a, a, a firewall. Uh, you know, a rule is essentially uh, that. It's just a rule that specifies what to do with a specific uh, packet or with a traffic from a specific port, etc. And it, it's the same thing for uh, it's the same thing for Snort, whereby you have the ability to, at a very basic level, uh, log or uh, essentially notify or uh, alert individuals of specific traffic. So, you know, I can notify the administrators or the security analysts that there is a an FTP connection, for example. Now, one of the great things with Snort rules is you have the ability to perform signature matching, whereby based on the content contained within the packet, I can identify a signature and I can then uh, utilize that signature to detect uh, an intrusion or an attack. And I'll give you a practical example of this during the practical demonstration. All right, now, in order to understand how Snort works, you need to know that it has three main operational modes. All right, so you have packet sniffing, where it collects and displays network traffic like what Wireshark does. That's fairly simple. We can do that with Wireshark. We then have packet logging, which collects and logs network traffic into a file. Again, Wireshark also does that, and that's why I actually covered Wireshark to begin with, because we will be using it to actually uh, analyze the logged traffic. Uh, but what we're focused on is the network intrusion detection uh, operation mode that analyzes packets and matches traffic against signatures uh, specified within rules or matches uh, traffic against uh, the rules that you have specified. Now, Snort detects malicious traffic or attacks by leveraging pattern matching. When active, Snort captures packets, reassembles them, analyzes them and determines what needs to be done to the packet based on, the, on predefined rules. So if you install and configure Snort, but don't, uh, and you know, you disable the, the default community rules and you don't have any of your own predefined rules, then, you know, Snort is pretty much uh, non-functional at that, at that point. So what the message I'm trying to convey here is that rules are, uh, you know, the, the core uh, are at the core of, uh, you know, the functionality of Snort. So Snort rules are very similar to a typical firewall rule, whereby they are used to match network activity against specific patterns or signatures and consequently make a decision as to whether to send an alert or drop the traffic in the case of uh, the intrusion uh, prevention system mode. All right. Now, one of the great things about Snort is that it has a large amount of rule sets created by the community that are very useful to begin with. Now, why are these important? Well, they're important because the community essentially generates rules uh, for the latest attacks or exploits so that if you get the latest rule set, then that means that your network is up to date in regards to detecting these uh, new types of attacks or intrusions, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, another great thing with Snort is that uh, the, the actual process of writing rules is extremely easy to understand and to actually do yourself which means if you are a security analyst uh, and there is a new exploit developed, you can essentially perform an analysis on that exploit and generate your own, uh, your own uh, snort rule to detect that uh, in the event that attack is performed on your network or the network that you're actually protecting. So let's talk a little bit about the snort versions because I think this is very, very important and there could be a confusion, uh, you know, with what version to use. All right, so... One thing to note is that Snort was initially developed in 1998 and has been continuously improved since then. What does that mean? It means that Snort has been a, an ongoing open source project and it has had a lot of contributions. And of course, uh, given the fact that it is open source, uh, the typical uh, release, um, the actual uh, mode of release that they've utilized is a, a versioning system 
that in uh, in my case uh, makes a lot of sense whereby you know we are currently have two versions of snort available we have snort version 2.x so that means uh, you know whatever version of uh, version 2 because there are many variants uh, but uh, ideally you want to use the latest version of version 2 uh, so version 2 is the de facto version of snort and is the version of snort that is typically deployed or is uh, most widely implemented and has the most rules or rule sets for. And then we have Snort 3.0, which is the latest version of Snort that features improved efficiency, performance, scalability, and usability over Snort 2. Not to say that Snort 2 is slow, sluggish, or uh, you know does not offer any good usability or scalability functionality. It's just an improvement on top of Snort 2. In this video, we will be using Snort 2 as it is the most widely implemented version and has ex extensive support uh, documentation and rule sets created by the community. One thing to note is that eventually we will be migrating to version 3 and version 2 might as well be deprecated. However, I do not see that for the foreseeable future because, as I said, one of the issues that Snort has faced is the fact that uh, when they released version 2, uh, that version was, uh, you know, uh, that, that's essentially when um, when Snort started becoming mainstream and a huge number of their customers or, you know, users who use Snort are on version 2. And in order to migrate to version 3, there are a few things you need to take into consideration. The most important of which is the actual uh, rule format or the actual syntax for, for writing rules, whereby rules written for Snort 2 will need to be rewritten or converted to the new Snort 3 format and of course, in the case of uh, Snort 3, the Snort configuration file is programmed uh, in the Lua programming language. So there's a lot of changes. And the reason I'm focusing on version 2 is primarily because this is the uh, easiest and best way to actually get started with understanding Snort, uh, learning how to use it, and of course, implementing it within your own network. Now, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the Snort rules, because I've mentioned them quite a bit. So Snort has three types of rules or rule sets. You have your community rules, which are free rule sets created by the Snort community. You have registered rules. These are free rule sets created by Talos. In, in order to use them, you must register for uh, an account. They're very useful. And then, of course, you have your subscription only rules. These are rule sets. Uh, these rule sets require an active paid subscription in order to be accessed and used. So I think it's about $39 per month that you pay to Snort. And this is uh, very useful for companies whereby you're essentially outsourcing your threat intelligence to Snort and uh, and you know, based on the latest CVEs and exploits and uh, you know, intrusions or you know, really just exploits and threats, they develop uh, rules, uh, rules for them and you can then download these rule sets and ensure that your network is up to date uh, with regards to detecting the latest attacks or intrusions, if you will. Or alternatively, we can write our own rules based on your own requirements, right? So we'll be exploring that as well. Now, whenever you're writing a snort rule yourself, it's very important that you understand the syntax. As I said, it's very easy. Once you start writing rules yourself, it really is very easy. So um, the first the first segment here, and this is uh, typically separated with this direction, so that's a hyphen and greater than symbol. So this is where you specify the rule header, right? And then you have the rule option. So this is the rule header. And then you're going to say, you know, you're going to specify options pertinent to that rule. So in this case, the action is alert. So that means that uh, in the case of this rule, uh, when there is a, an ICMP packet or ICMP traffic coming from the following IP address from any port to any, uh, to any IP address and any port on the target network or the network that you are protecting or that you have a snort configured to monitor, then log the following. So the message is going to be or send the following alert and the message is going to be ICMP attempt attack. And then it has a signature ID, which you can essentially, you know, create your own signature IDs based on your own requirements. So it really is very simple. So you're essentially saying the action firstly, which can be alert, drop, log, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then the protocol can be ICMP, TCP, UDP, IP, et cetera. And then you can specify the source, uh, the, the source IP address. And in this case, you can also say any. So you can say 
uh, any traffic coming from any IP address from any port that comes into our home network, which I'll explain uh, on a specific port or on any port, you then, you know, you essentially specify the rule option. It's really very easy. This will make sense once we get into the practical demonstration. So how does Snort work, right? So this diagram really explains what happens, right? So you have your network infrastructure and then incoming traffic comes into the Snort host or the Snort server. And then you can see right over here, capture packets through sniffing. So it captures all the packets for all the devices or hosts on the network. It then goes through a preprocessor and then it goes through the Snort plugin and packet decoding. And then of course it goes through the classification of the packets and uh, in the event a signature is matched alarms uh, the alarm logging process is uh, essentially implemented where it's either logged or an alert is sent and uh, you know it also goes through the snort detection engine and rule set and again that all comes into the alarms and logging uh, process or segment uh, you know in regards to how snort uh, processes uh, or essentially handles traffic. And then of course, uh, you know, it goes into a log file for, anal uh, for analysis. Now, this is very important because I do know that this can be quite confusing. As I said, Snort can work in two modes and this is very important, right? It can work as an, uh, as an intrusion detection system or an intrusion prevention system. Now, in this, in these, uh, in this particular diagram, uh, you have two use cases. The top one is for uh, is wh whereby you can use Snort as an intrusion prevention system. So you have your internet, you have your router, and in some cases you may have a firewall, but you can disregard that. So ideally, you want to place the system that is running Snort between the router and the switch. So remember, all traffic. That means that all traffic is uh, is coming in through Snort and it also goes out through snort right so you want in the case of an intrusion prevention system or whereby you want to use snort uh, for intrusion prevention then you want to set it up at a choke point right and uh, you know that's fairly simple to understand so that means that any uh, any communication coming into any of these devices within your network your internal network are all going through snort and uh, you know it can then decide to drop packets uh, based on the rules that you specify now if you want to use it as an intrusion detection system which is what we are going to do you can see you have the internet you have your router a firewall you're essentially connecting it to a switch so uh, if you're on a lan or if you're using a virtualized environment like uh you know like with virtualbox then the switch aspect is already taken care for you so if you have more than one virtual machine connected to the same type of network adapter, then they're going to be connected uh, to each other through a virtual switch. So ideally you want to have your uh, the, the actual uh, server running uh, Snort connected or part of the network that all the other VMs are a part of, which is what we're going to be doing. So ideally this should fit within that network. So they're going to be on the same subnet, uh, but they're all connected to the switch. So that means that, uh, you know, uh, Snort is essentially monitoring all traffic uh, that is coming in and out of, uh, you know, all the devices on the network. And based on that traffic, it, you know, tells you what's happening. So it'll tell you, uh, you know, based on your rules, whether there's an intrusion, uh, whether, you know, a ping has been performed, et cetera, et cetera. So there's multiple ways of configuring it. And uh, as, I, as I would say, if you are looking at implementing Snort as an intrusion prevention system, then this would uh, best be implemented uh, within a physical network, within a real network, as opposed to a virtualized environment. However, in our case, because I need to showcase uh, this, uh, you know, I need to actually showcase how to use Snort as an IDS, we'll be doing it through VirtualBox. All right, so this is the lab environment. It's fairly simple. So we are going to have an external network. So this is where we're going to have the Kali Linux virtual machine. So this is running on another network adapter. So this is running on a NAT network. And then of course we have the following segment, which is the internal network, whereby we're going to have uh, the virtual uh, the virtual box switch here. And uh, you can see that in this case, the subnet is 192.168.2.0 forward slash 24. In your case, it's going to be different. Ideally, what I'm saying is all of these three systems, the Kali Linux VM, the Ubuntu 20.04 VM running Snort, and the vulnerable Linux server 
are all running on VirtualBox. However, these two are running on the same network on, or on the same network adapter. Uh, and this one is running on a different network, right? Uh, in order to simulate what would happen if external traffic, uh, you know, if there was uh, traffic from an external system. And of course, you can also have this within the same inter internal network, because again, remember, we're essentially monitoring the traffic for our current or, or for, you know, for the network that we are responsible for managing or securing. So regardless of what infrastructure you use, just make sure the simplest way is just make sure that all three VMs are running on the same, uh, in, in the case of VirtualBox, they're running on the same adapter and uh, you know are part of the same subnet. As long as you do that, then you'll be able to replicate what I'm about to show you. I just want to take a couple of moments to thank our Patreons. Thank you, Michael Hubbard, Dustin Umpress, Jerry Speds, Doozy, Sid Saab, Ryan Carr, Shamir Douglas, Jojo BB, Palangos, Kushkev, RS, Nino Buikov, and David Bricker. You guys are really awesome. Thank you very much for supporting us. And you guys make these types of videos possible. So we really appreciate it. And we look forward to producing even more high quality content.